Hey there, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani. It's a great Friday down here in Austin, Texas, and we are on our keto kick. We're gonna be talking about the common side effects of ketosis. So let's dig in. These are straight from my practice, things that I've experienced with and things that I've been able to help solve and work through with my patients. So off the bat, we have the keto flu, we have cramping, we have heart racing, and we have bad breath. So first off, let's hit the keto flu. So what is the keto flu off the bat? Well, first off, let's kind of draw our spectrum. We have on one side being a fat burner. And this is the goal of ketosis, right? Is burning more fat, relatively speaking. And then on the other side, we have being a sugar burner. All right, and the sugar burner is essentially like relying on glucose and, and the fast acting carbohydrates. Now, really simple, sugar burner is gonna be like paper or gasoline in the fire. All right, this is like paper or gasoline in the fire. All right, anyone who's gone camping, if you're only relying on gas and paper to light that fire, you're gonna be there all night. Up, out, up, out, up, out, right? And that's how you feel, up and down. That's how your adrenals look, up and down. As a fat burner, these are gonna be like our logs and sticks or kindling, right? So again, once we get that fire going, that's gonna burn long and strong because that fuel source is just more sustainable. It's more hardy. So the whole goal of the keto, well, the whole goal of ketosis and what happens in the keto flu is if you're starting from here, if this is your starting point, you're on the sugar burner side, Okay, as we start moving the patient to burning more fat, each step along the way, we may have some symptoms, all right? Each hour represents symptoms. That could be achy, fatigue, brain fog, mood issues, crampy, right? So a lot of these things could be there as your body's used to being over here, it's really resisting because basically it's like you got this huge tank, right? big tank engine, we're pulling that engine out and now we're putting a Ferrari engine in there or a Tesla engine, right? Tesla battery, if you will. So now that car is gonna move way differently because it's a totally different fuel source. So we're really jump-starting the sugar burner aspect. We're pulling that engine out, we're shifting our metabolism and now we're, we put the Tesla engine or the Ferrari engine and now we're burning fat for fuel, relatively speaking. Now the camping analogy, paper and gas doesn't quite work in the long run. Now we're cooking with logs and sticks. So again, typically about two weeks for some people. Again, the more insulin resistant you are, the more tough this process is. The more insulin sensitive you are, typically the easier that process will be with the exception of doing a lot, a lot of excessive exercise and low carb that may make that worse. Cramping and racing heart. Again, when your insulin drops, let's draw it out, decrease insulin. One of the big things that falls is decreased sodium, okay? Now this is important. Sodium is needed with that sodium potassium pump for that interchange of the cell membrane. Sodium is important for that nerve conduction and action potential of our nerves working. So we need decent sodium levels. So one of the things, you go low carb, you go ketogenic, what happens the first couple of days? You lose a lot of weight. Why is that? Well, that's because every gram of glucose typically has three to four grams of water around it. So when you drop that glucose, you're dropping all that water as well. And that's why you drop weight so fast. Also, you decrease inflammation. The more inflamed you are, the more you hold on to water, right? You got a bruise or someone whacks you in the face, right? It swells up, right? All that water because of the inflammation, because of the immune response. So cramping and racing heartbeat, how do you fix it? Pretty simple. You do healthy bone broth. You do bone broth on one side, Okay, the other side, you eat lots of leafy greens, lots of leafy greens, because the leafy greens are gonna have tons of potassium in there. Avocados also have even more potassium than a banana. People think potassium, they go banana. No, avocados almost got twice as much as a banana. And then you can also do in your bone broth, you can do like some celery, some onions, and leafy greens in there, and then drink that broth. You'll get all the sodium and minerals from the bone, all the nutrients from the connective tissue, and then you'll also get some of the potassium from the greens. So you get your sodium and your potassium and all your minerals that way. And then you can also do sea salt in your water to also help. The bad breath. Hope that part makes sense. 
That's a, that's a game changer. But I have patients with their heart rates going crazy because of the minerals. The bad breath, as you go into ketosis, one of the things we see is we see acetate, acetone, and um, beta-hydroxybutyrate. Those are the major ketones. So the other ketone is the acetone. So that can be kind of like acetone. That can be fruity bad breath. That can be fruity bad breath. And that's just part of fruity breath. That can easily be just part of that ketosis process. And as your body adapts to it, that may get better and may change. Also, you're just eating too much or you're eating a lot of protein and fat and your gut's not digesting it. Your stomach's not breaking it down. So it could also be poor digestion. So making sure you up the hydrochloric acid, you up the enzymes, increase enzymes, increase HCL, and then you can also increase probiotics as well just to help. Doesn't hurt. In my line, that's probioflora, but your lactobacillus, acidophilus type of strains are great. So again, bad breath, acetone, because your body's spitting out ketones, acetone, acetate, beta-hydroxybutyrate, and then also poor digestion, not enough HCL, that protein is putrefying, the fats rancidifying, not too much carbs fermenting, but just the poor digestion there and all those things kind of breaking down and rotting inside your intestine. I know not the best visual, but again, hydrochloric acid enzymes and bile salts will help with that. Hope I helped you guys out here with the common ketosis side effects. Make sure you sidestep them with my solutions and subscribe down below. Give me a share. And if you guys need more help or more support digging in with the hormones or the gut or other metabolic pathways, click down below and schedule a consult with myself. Again, this is Dr. J signing off. You guys have an awesome weekend. Thanks. Bye.